Out of the Blue, How Animals Evolved from Prehistoric Seas. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, this is Hector, and we have a question for you. Which two of these animals are the closest relatives? Two have rubbery fins and ocean homes. They seem like close cousins, but they're not. How can that be? This question took me on a journey to understand how all types of animals originally came out of the ocean. Yes, even poodles, Hector. It's a big question, a huge question. It's a question that I explore in this nonfiction book for kids, Out of the Blue. Let's see how that book came together. To get started, I read lots of books and articles, watched tons of videos. I made charts and sketches, trying to put information into order. I even bought a big poster of the geologic time scale, but Hector took a bite out of it. Hector, you're a time-eating dog. Honestly, things weren't going so well at first. Sometimes I had to go for a long walk to clear my head. Then I remembered, sometimes you need to ask for help. I got in touch with Dr. Rich Moy at the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco, a biologist who knows a lot about life in the oceans. As a boy, Rich dreamed of sailing on a research vessel or diving deep under the waves. His dreams came true. Rich helped me to understand how life got started as microbes, tiny little life forms much too small to see without a microscope. After billions of years, those little microbes in the oceans got more complex and started converting sunlight into energy, as plants do today. Finally, explosion, the Cambrian explosion that is, when so many new life forms appeared. Imagine living in the ancient seas 500 million years ago when these strange creatures came along. During the Cambrian, Major groups of animals in our world took shape. Arthropods have skeletons on their outside of their bodies called exoskeletons. Animals with backbones are part of the chordates. They have bones inside their bodies. Can you guess which group we belong to? Are we arthropods, like this beetle with exoskeletons, or chordates with endoskeletons, bones inside our bodies? After talking to Rich, I began to understand how life evolved slowly in the water while land lay rocky and bare for millions and billions of years. And I wondered which animal first ventured onto shore. To answer this, I reached out to Dr. Petra Searwald at the Field Museum in Chicago. When Petra was a girl, her grandmother put a spider on her hand and said, look, isn't it beautiful? Since then, Petra has become an expert in spiders and another type of little animal that she calls the many-leggers, millipedes and centipedes. Petra explained how millipedes were probably the first critters to wriggle onto shore and how their tough exoskeletons helped them survive on dry land where hardly any plants grew. Today, we find traces of them as fossils, the tracks where they wiggled through the mud. After that first adventurous millipede, life underwater continued to get more dangerous, full of predators like giant sea scorpions, hungry all the time. To avoid being eaten and to find food, other animals moved on to land, leaving their ocean cousins behind. They adapted to new places, new ways to breathe and move and find food. Their bodies changed too. Ocean animals evolved at the same time, this octopus, for example, is the far distant relative of a garden snail. They don't look much alike anymore. Other animals, like horseshoe crabs, stayed in the water and haven't changed much at all. But can you guess who their land cousins might be? Spiders. But what about those animals with backbones, the chordates? It's time for the invasion of the fish. Around 400 million years ago, animals with backbones crawled onto dry land for the first time. To learn more, I studied the work of Dr. Neil Shubin at the University of Chicago, who's been interested in how fish came ashore ever since he was a kid. Neil discovered a fossil called Tiktaalik, kind of a cross between fish and animals with four limbs like us. We call them 
fishapods. Do you know how your body is similar to theirs? Did you know that fish get hiccups? Check out the book for more. But remember that first question about the three animals? Well, after fishapods, life on land got busy. Reptiles, giant insects, dinosaurs, flowering plants, an asteroid hit, wiping out the dinosaurs, except for birds. And it was time for the age of mammals. One family tree of mammals branched into two very different types of animals. One branch stayed on land and they became hippos. Another branch of the family took a different path. Around 50 million years ago, along came a creature we called Pachycetus. It was around the size of a wolf. Okay, Hector, maybe it was poodle-sized. And it walked on land. But gradually, over a long, long time, Animals on the Pacasita side of the family returned to the sea. They lost their hind legs. Their front legs were flippers. They look like fish, but they're not. And that is how mud-loving, plant-munching hippos became cousins of fast-swimming dolphins, creatures of the open sea. Wow! After all this research, I could finally answer that first question. I could write the story. My text went to the illustrator, Fran Preston Gannon. She started sketching. She did tons of research, too. We worked back and forth to make sure that the words and pictures were accurate. I even got more help from my scientist friends. There's lots more of Fran's beautiful artwork in the book. I hope you enjoy it. There's so much to learn and love about the oceans and so much to take care of. Check out my other videos for interviews with all three scientists, see where they work, where they do their field work, and how they use live specimens and fossils from long ago to understand the squiggling, squirming, wonderful history of life on planet Earth. Bye for now. <laughs>